I would like to make three comments about it and keep this in mind. Number one, the occurrence of a general sign does not necessarily mean that his appearance is imminent. And this is where we have to realize that, you know, we should not just jump onto the conclusion when we see extraordinary signs that the zuhur is imminent. The second point, pandemics such as, you know, uh, coronavirus are not something new in human history. This has happened in, in past, in different, kinds, uh, uh, different parts of the world. You know, these days we have this global media, so we know what's going on. Many times, you know, it would happen in one part of the world, the other part wouldn't even know about it. But if you study history, you will come to realize that even in holy place, places, in Iran, in Iraq, in Hejaz, pandemics have taken place to an extent that the masajid were closed there and even the jamaat prayers were suspended. So what we see is happening now is not something, you know, unprecedented and new. We don't know much about history, but if you go and study, you will see in many places of the Muslim areas, uh, these pandemics have happened earlier. And the third point, if you really look at the number of deaths at, at the moment from COVID-19, it comes to around 75,000 people globally. But look at the 2018 report of UNICEF. And you will see that approximately 1.3 million children die from undernutrition every year. And so, you know, put this issue in proper perspective. Do not jump to the conclusion that this is the sign of the imminent zuhur of the Imam. Let me now move on to the specific signs of the zuhur of the Imam. The first one. A voice would be heard from the sky. This will be Angel Jibreel making the announcement. And this will happen in the month of Ramadan. And the announcement would be made, Ala inna sahib al-zaman qad zahara. Verily the master of the time has appeared. This announcement will be heard by each and every human being on the face of this world. Irrespective of their language, everybody will be able to understand what is this announcement. Those who will be asleep, they will wake up when they hear that. Those who will be sitting, for example, will stand up. Means every, everyone, you know, will be alerted that the zuhur and the appearance of the imam has taken place. If you had looked at this hadith, you know, 100 years ago, you might say, you know, how is this going to happen? That there will be one announcement and the whole world will hear about it. With the advancement of man-made means of fast communication that we have now, this concept is not difficult to, uh, you know, understand and accept. If human beings can create, you know, the communication means of announcing things on a global level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. And this is where Jibreel's announcement will be heard all over the world. So this is the first specific sign which will happen in the month of Ramadan of that year when the zuhur takes place. The second specific sign would be that the, before of the, the zuhur of the imam, there will be eclipse of lunar and solar will take place in the month of Ramadan, in one single month of Ramadan, but at unusual timings. Lunar and solar eclipse are natural phenomenon. You know, moon eclipse occurs between the 13th and 15th of the lunar calendar. Whereas the sun eclipse happens between 28th and 38th of the lunar calendar. And so this is the norm. So you have the moon eclipse in the middle of the month, sun eclipse at the end of the month. But the extraordinary nature of this sign, of the zuhur of the imam, will be that this eclipse will happen at opposite times where the sun eclipse will happen in the middle of the lunar month and the lunar eclipse will happen at the end of that month and this will be something very unprecedented and a miraculous uh, you know sign and the third one 
In that list is a Sayyid will appear from the area of Khurasan. Khurasan is the province which is now in the Iran, Afghanistan area. And a Sayyid will emerge from that area and, peop and people will accept him as a leader and they will pledge allegiance to him and he will uh, form a huge army. His army um, will be not stopped by anyone and he will move towards Iraq to face the army of Sufyani and we'll talk about Sufyani after this and he will force the army of Sufyani to retreat from one town to another all the way back to Iraq. However, in the final encounter, Sufyani's army will prevail and the Sayyid from Khurasan will be forced to flee to Mecca and he will seek refuge there until the appearance of the Imam happens. So let us go on now to the fourth specific sign, which, which is the emergence of Sufyani. Sufyani was a person, uh, will be a person whose name would be Usman. And he will be from the descendants of Qanbasa bin Abi Sufyan, from Ali Abi Sufyan. He will appear in Syria. He will be an open enemy of the Ahlul Bayt. He will gather uh, an army in Syria and um, Basically, he will send a force of 7,000 soldiers to Iraq, all the way to Kufa. Sayyid Khurasani's army will engage Sufyani's army and force uh, it to retreat from one city to another. But as I said earlier, Khurasani's uh, forces would be defeated. Sayyid Khurasani himself will flee to Hijaz and Sufyani's army will pursue him all the way to Medina. There he will run from, flee from Medina to Mecca. And this is where the Sufyani's army will pursue the Sayyid Khurasani. They will camp for resting in a desert between Medina and Mecca. And this is where the another sign of Zuhur will happen. A voice from the sky will be heard which will address the earth. O earth, destroy this tyrant's group. And as soon as this voice would be sounded, the earth will open up and the entire army of Sufyani will perish. Very similar to the way the uh, army of Fir'aun perished with the, through water. Sufyani himself will be in Damascus and he will be killed uh, later on near that city. So now we move on to the fifth specific sign. And that is the murder of a Hassani Sayyid in Mecca, in Masjid al-Haram actually. There is a confusion in the Ahadith between uh, this Hassani Sayyid and somebody known as Nafs al-Zakiya, whether they are one and the same person or they are two different individuals. Now this is a sign which is considered to be um, an imminent, uh, this is the sign that the zuhur of the Imam is imminent after that. Because we have a hadith from our sixth Imam where he says, between the appearance of the Qaim Ali Muhammad, Salawatullah Ali Ajma'een, so between the, between the appearance of the Imam and the murder of Nafs al Zakiyah, there is only 15 nights. So just about two weeks in between. So this sign, murder of a Hassani Sayyid in Mecca, is actually an, an imminent sign of the appearance of the Imam. Another sign would be the issue of Dajjal. Dajjal, the Antichrist, and also the issue of coming of uh, Prophet Isa salam, at that time. Dajjal will claim to be the Messiah awaited by the Jewish people, and that is why he is known as Antichrist. And therefore the Jewish uh, people who will uh, actually uh, believe in him as a messiah, they will follow him and he will be one-eyed. One, one eye doesn't mean it's going to be on the uh, middle of his forehead, it's just meant that he will have one eye which is working. And so don't really go into all these uh, Netflix, uh, you know, documentary and, and movie which have come out about uh, what will happen uh, towards the end of the world. These are all their own assumption and uh, stories. We have to go to the Quran and the Hadith for what is going to happen in the future. And 
you know, Dajjal would be uh, claiming to be the Rabb and he will provide food and water to those who follow him. And it's at that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down the true Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam, to fight Dajjal. When Prophet Isa will come on the eastern side of Damascus near the white minaret at the mosque, wearing two robes of yellow color, the Muslims will have gathered with Imam Mahdi for the dawn prayer. When Prophet Isa will come, the Imam, out of respect, will retreat from the Musalla and welcome Prophet Isa to lead the prayers. But Isa ibn Maryam will say, you lead the prayer because you are the wasi and you are the heir of the last Prophet and this is his time and this is his era. This is where we see that the Imam would be on the Imam Musalla of Imamat and a Nabi and Ulul Azm Nabi like Isa ibn Maryam will do the prayers behind Imam Mahdi Ajjalallahu ta'ala Faraj Sharif Salawat Then the door of the city of Damascus will be open and the people who had gathered with the uh, Dajjal would be destroyed and this is where <coughs> Dajjal also uh, will be killed. Prophet Isa salam, will smash the cross and kill a, po a pig. Um, smashing the cross would be reflection of the um, deviation in the Christian faith. And killing of a pig would be a um, reflection on the deviation in the laws which had, been, uh, which had been sent down to them. And when the true Christians will see Isa ibn Maryam following Imam Mahdi, you know, automatically they will also become Muslims and will be the followers of Imam Mahdi, ajallahu ta'ala farju sharif. This will be the true fulfillment of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his prophet when he said in three places in the Quran, He is the one who has sent his messenger with guidance in the true faith. So that, you know, he will give um, domination to this religion or all religions even if those who are mushrik uh, and idol worshippers would you know dislike this reality may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know show us that day very soon inshallah <laughs>